Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are continuing our teaching on weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. We've gone to the pulling down of strongholds. They are there to cause havoc in the kingdom of darkness. And at the kingdom of uh, darkness is leaders, uh, Lucifer, and all principalities and powers and so forth. Today we're going to focus on one of the uh, another powerful weapon that we have at our disposal. All these weapons are act very powerful on their own. Um, but when we combine them as the body of Christ, we get so much done. And most of us are not aware of all of these weapons. And that is why I took the time to bring them to your attention so that you can start utilizing them in your situation. One of the other, um, uh, and it, probably the last one that I'm going to look at, is the people of God as a weapon. The Bible tells us that when we unify, things happen. And as um, one of the principles that God is always um, trying to get his body to get into is that of unity. And we see that as we unify, that um, many things get accomplished. Let me take, uh, take you to Psalms 133 and read that to you, verse, starting from verse uh, 1. Song of Ascent of David. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountain of Zion. For there, Lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. And again, we see that blessing um, is a part that when we unify as a body is present there as well. And we see that in the book of Acts. You read it, the Bible tells us many in, uh, in the book of Acts that they, the, the body of Christ came together as one. Let me take you um, to Acts 4.32. All the believers united in heart and mind. And they felt that what they own not their own. So they shared everything they had. Imagine the body of Christ behaving like that. That is powerful. I think everyone would see that is outside of that kingdom. They would see this and they're going to want to ask questions. And the Bible tells us that for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am amongst them. So we know that there is unity, power, amongst those that are come together once we come into that space of unity. So let's take a look at Matthew 18, um, 18, and we'll read a couple of verses after that. Uh, Matthew 18, 18 tells us, I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in the heavens. Whatever you permit on the earth will be permitted in the heavens. And we know that the King James says, whatsoever we bind on earth and so forth. But I love this translation. You and I, as the body of Christ, whatever we forbid, happen on this planet will the heavens will also happen on this earth so the state of the planet and the earth is based on what the christian permits because we are here that buffer between uh lucifer and his army and the children um and mankind that is our goal is to um populate the kingdom of god the bible says thy kingdom come on earth and so that is our responsibility to do that so now let's take a look at verses 19 in Matthew and see what it says. I also tell you this, two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask. My Father in heaven, he will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there amongst them. And so we see that um, there is power in that space when we come together. And um, the Bible tells us that we ought to not for, um, uh, uh, forsake the assembling of the brothers. And uh, I want to tell you guys, you've heard me many, many times to get out of churches that do not um, the gospel uh, of the kingdom of God if they don't do that. If you're not seeing hands laid on and people, if you're not seeing all of these things, you need to get out because there's supposed to be some stuff happening to those. So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 10. Verses 25, um, for not forsaking the assembling of yourself um, together as the manner of some is, exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And so 
my advice to you guys is um, if you don't have a church, just get one on, on television so you can participate uh, because there are many there. Just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you lead you to a church. But um, in the meantime, just uh, um, tune into several of those. The Bible tells us that uh, there's a couple of things that I mentioned to you supposed to be happening when this unity is, is amongst James 15, James 5, sorry, f- verses 15 through 17, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the, lo- and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he is, has committed any sin, he shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, pray one for another, that he may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. And this particular um, chapter and verse he's talking about look at the previous uh, um, verses he's talking about the elders getting the elders together and praying and when they lay hands on the sick it says the the um, the prayer of faith shall um, you know shall heal that sick uh, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and also heal the sick and so we need to have these things happening in the church and you can only do that if you're together in unity as I mentioned to you, I showed you when we are in unity, according to Matthew eighteen nineteen, that God is there in the midst, Jesus is there in the midst, within that phrase the Bible tells us we ought not to forsake our assembling, which is in Hebrews. I showed you Acts 4, 32, when that power and the unity that is mentioned about them. And so um, there's also a bunch of other scriptures, complete my joy by you being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. And this is in Philippians uh, to 2, and we're Paul. And uh, Paul, he stresses that a lot about um, uh, uh, the people coming together. And I know the Philippians as well. Uh, he mentioned that. First um, Corinthians, he goes, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no division amongst you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. First Corinthians 10, one, uh, verses 1 uh, to uh, chapter 1, verse 10, sorry. And so these are scriptures just telling you and I about coming together as one. I read you uh, the picture that uh, David planted, uh, and he saw the result of us coming together as one. So let me take you to another scripture, another incident with the Bible talks about this unity and we see this in genesis chapter 11 now the whole world had one language and common speech as people moved eastward they found a plain in china and settled there they said to each other come let's make brick and bake them thoroughly they use brick instead of stone and tar for mortar they then said come let us build ourselves um, a city with a tower that reaches to the heaven, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. And I actually did a study about this particular verse uh, because the book of um, the book of Yasher goes a little more detail as to why they did that, who was doing that, and all of those things. And I did a study at my other podcast, Mystery Bible that I deal specifically about that whole incident right there. Let's go on in verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, As one people speaking the same language have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So we see that unity will make God come on the scene. We see that Jesus mentioned that. He says, If two of you there, I'm on the scene. So unity will always bring power and bring God on the scene and so that you and I can have things done and um, as stand before the enemy so that he can understand as a united front is God's people that he has no power. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, the Bible tells us. Uh, Ezra 4, uh, 3 says, But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, and this is when these guys were trying to come and have them work with them, he says, You have nothing to do with us, Bill, um, and house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build to the Lord God of Israel. And so you and I, we ourselves together, will build this uh, and bring this kingdom of God 
uh, right here on this planet. And it is our responsibility that we must be unified. And if you look at the church today, you will understand why we haven't um, accomplished what we are set to do, because we are still fighting, we are neglecting each other. And the Bible tells us we ought not to do that. Um, but we need to come together as one. When you and I come together as one, uh, the Bible says us that we will do tremendous things. And as children of God, if we are of the same kingdom, we ought to be of the same mind and of the same spirit. And so that we can come together as the, um, you know, as the body of Christ so that we can get this stuff done, man. Because uh, those people that are hurting, they're hurting because you and I are behaving as children and not as kings, you know, and as the sons of God. So we are called to be one. And we see this all through the scripture. And I've been reading a couple of them to you guys. Um, First Peter 8, finally, all of you have uh, unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender hearted and a humble mind. And as we get into that space, uh, we can do tremendous amount of damage to the kingdom of of uh, darkness. Uh, Colossians three fourteen. Above all the put on love, which binds everything together in perfect love harmony. Guys, you and I have to come together, and as we come together, uh, we will become this united front that the enemy cannot imagine. All of us coming together, worshiping God in in spirit and in truth. Imagine all of us coming together, pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. Imagine all of us coming together in faith, in unity, and proclaiming the word of God as a sword and the love of God. Imagine all of us uh, praying and loosing the name of Jesus Christ. Imagine what the church would be like if you and I began to behave as we should. Imagine what we can do for our Father as people begin to see who He is and what He has done for us and the power that is within us. As we come together, uh, David says that anointing, the oil represents the anointing. We'll be pouring down our heads, coming down to our neck and our shoulders, and that anointing will cause us to do things that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Bible tells us prayer of uh, faith will heal the sick. The Bible tells us that we are able to cast out demons and those that are sick shall recover. Imagine if the church really stands up. And I had a sermon that I had preached a long time ago. Will the real church please stand up? And so you and I are called to become one. This bickering tells us it's only from the devil. The devil comes to do this and he's doing it. He got us in all kinds of different nations and nonsense that uh, we have split ourselves and even recognize the body of Christ. We are so splintered in all kinds of mess and uh, not unified at all. And who do you think has done that? The enemy has done that. God is not going to splinter us like this so we have no power. We need to get together to find ways and become new and uh, become this, uh, this powerhouse that we are uh, on, the, on this earth. And the Bible tells us, as I mentioned to you, 18, 19, I, I also tell you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything you ask my Father in heaven, will be, um, be done for you. And so if he said this, he, he must mean it because he's not a liar. He doesn't lie. So he said that if we come together and to agree on earth concerning anything, what is it that this world is going through? that the church do not have the authority to deal with. But it tells us straight there. He says, anything concerning anything um, that is going on here. He says, whatsoever we permit, we permitted. And whatsoever bind on earth, will, or whatsoever we um, forbid, will be forbidden in the heavens. So that's where the enemy lives. And we know that he's here on this earth, but he is roaming back and forth, the Bible tells us. So the heavenly, in the spiritual realms, it says, that if uh, I tell you the truth, whatsoever you forbid on earth, be forbidden in heaven. So that means that you and I deal with it in the spiritual realm, I mean here on earth, and God will deal with it uh, in, in the spiritual realm. Whatever we permit on this earth will be permitted in the heavens. And so you have chaos in the earth because you have chaos in the realm that um, we have the authority to shut these guys down. And it's time that we wake up and not allow these um, little things to come between you and I and um, people don't believe in the Holy Spirit. How in the world can you become a Christian when Jesus said he sends you the Holy Spirit? 
I, we please okay let me get going finally brothers rejoice aim for restoration comfort one another be with one another live in and the god of love and peace will be with you and so you and i are called i showed you through the word um took you to genesis that even god came down he says these people are in one and they will be able to do anything they set their mind that's his that was not that's just regular people. So imagine us as Christians, as believers, and when we set our mind to and come together in praise and worship and all the other weapons that I mentioned to you guys, telling you we can be very effective for the kingdom of God on this earth. So the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith, and we walk by faith by sight.